for some men, polygamy is about status. It's about ego. I'm so wealthy, I can afford to have more than one wife. Why not? They never really thought through about the implications of that act. They never thought about how that would impact on their generations in years to come. <music>relationships with Mabel Egedi. If you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and be a part of this growing community. So today's topic is polygamy. Polygamy is um, the marriage between multiple partners and um, I'm going to be focusing more on the polygyny aspect which is um, a man marrying more than one wife. So I know that in some societies it is acceptable for people to get married to more than one wife, whereas in some it is not. So the reasons, or there is this argument where people will say that if you can't take care of more than one wife, it is justifiable for you to take on more wives if you can take care of them. And, and, and some people will argue that there are more women in the world than men. And for this reason, it is fair for men to take on more than one wife so that some women would not remain um, unmarried. You know, and uh, some other reasons would be the first wife cannot give birth to a baby or the first wife cannot fulfill her marital obligations to her husband and so for this reason the man decides to take on another wife so some reasons in all fairness are justifiable provided the woman is consenting of it then it's it's okay because at, at the end of the day these are two consenting adults that have decided to live their life that way and all we can do is wish them, give them our best wishes and respect them, you know, the same way that they would respect me for my choices. So it all boils down to choices. But where it becomes really unfair is a woman does not consent to the man getting married to, to another woman. And the woman stays in her home and suddenly the man announces that he's taking on another woman. So this man is not asking for her permission. This man is just making her know that this is what he's going to do. Take it or leave it. You know, you have the, the, the option of staying or leaving. Now, this woman understanding that she has like how many kids and she wants to be married. Leaving that marriage is that she leaves that marriage to become a second wife elsewhere or remain in that marriage to be first wife and suffocate. So the woman would be like, some so women would be like, okay, fine. Since he, he has decided to go ahead to bring another woman, um, I'm going to make life a living hell for him and the woman. And the other second wife says, I'm married to this person and I should have equal rights as the first wife. So why would I um, act like a subordinate to any, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to be submissive or uh, subordinate to anyone because we do have equal rights. It is our husband, you know. So you get to see all of this rivalry going on between the first wife or the, and the second wife, you know. And the husband can never have peace in a home where there is division. So for all of these reasons, I say polygamy is not something I smile on. It's something I frown at because this also impacts on the kids. The kids witness all of this everyday fights going on between the wives, between the husband. Now for any woman that is choosing to become a second wife, and mostly your first wife is not accepting of you, remember this. It's not about you. It's also about the children, your children, the unborn children. Why have you chosen to subject your children into such toxicity, into such an unhealthy environment? That innocent child needs all the love they can get. And you need to be very certain of the love that that child would get before it is born. But I'm sure that you and I know that when you choose to go into a relationship with a man that is already married, it cannot be all rose. It can never be that sweet. There will be pain. There will be chaos. There will be fights. There will be division. Why do you choose such an environment for your unborn children? 
Why do you choose to raise your kids or have kids for someone, you know, in an environment that you're very certain that the chances of it being a toxic one is really high? Why do you choose that? So when you're consenting to the man to become his second wife, what exactly are you consenting for? Do you see him as an escape route for the situation you're in? You're lonely. You need someone and you don't mind sharing with someone else's. You're poor. You need to climb up that social, you know, economic ladder and you see him as an escape route. For you, all of your motives seem very selfish. Very selfish. You are just as selfish as the man. And it's, I feel more for your children, not for you per se. And, I, and I'm saying this to people that the religion and their society does not permit. But you are happy to be hidden somewhere. But you are happy to be hidden somewhere as a second wife. And you are, or you are happy to come into the family regardless to cause chaos and find your own space in that family. And build yourself in that family. To you I say this. Think very well. You have more to lose than gain. I might be wrong. But think about it. Now for the husband I begin to imagine like. Imagine when you're dating your boyfriend. Or when you're just in a, in, in a relationship with just one person. And you complain that this person doesn't have enough time for you. This person is going out. He doesn't pick my call. He doesn't respond to my message. He's always traveling. Now imagine when you have to share that man with many women. How much time has it going to get? Is it going to get for you? Like this man would come to see you once in a week or once in a month. So he's barely there for his kids. And these kids are missing on fatherly love. These kids are growing up without a father in their life. The father is always absent. He, he They just see the father as, you know, like a bank. I just, I need money, I go to my dad, he solves my, my financial need, that's about it. And some men are incapable of even meeting up to their financial obligation. We're not talking about the social, psychological, and, and emotional needs that the man cannot really meet you know, or equally meet with all of them wives. And this creates jealousy. Let's be honest. Naturally, humans are naturally jealous. We pray not to have the extreme version of jealousy, which is very unhealthy. But it's okay for we, uh, for humans to be jealous. So, this, a, a, a child is not happy to share the father. Neither is a woman happy to share her husband. It's very natural. So, have you ever been in any divorce proceedings? Have you seen how love turns to hate? How two people that are so much in love fight and tear themselves apart? Now imagine people that are living together that they, ha they have no option but to live together to survive. What are they going to do to this man? Tear him apart? Like you take half, I take half? You know, it is so much chaos. Polygamy. It causes depression. It's 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 it creates room for a very toxic environment. There's so much toxicity going on in um a polygamous home. I've got to speak to lots of people that I know that and I know that they are from polygamous home and none of them have something really good to talk about. You know, their experiences in that house. It's, it's always something very negative and it has left them very traumatized. There's a stigma they are scarred for life about the things that they've been through, you know, being from that kind of a home. And all of this could have been avoided if the man kept his emotions on check. I know that people will say that in a natural world, a man is not designed to be with just one woman. But in a natural world, I don't think a woman is designed to be with just one man. They say men are visual people. 
Yes, but women take their time to pick on a man that they want to be with. And then they tame that feelings. They, be, they, they decide to be, to have self-control, to be disciplined and say, I would not share my body with any other person but this person for safety, for protection, for harmony, for unity, and for the good of all. And so should a man be. It is not about in a man's world or in a, or, or, or in a woman's world, but in a, humane, a human's world. Because what is good for the good is good for the ganda. If you cannot stand your woman being with another man, why do you expect your woman to stand you being with another woman? Just because you think culture permits you to do that. But even if culture permits you to do that, do you think it's fair on the woman to go through all of those trauma? Is it fair on the kids? Not to have you in their life when they need you the most. Is it fair for you to put that, you, that woman into so much psychological pain? Some women are suffering PTSD today because of what their men, their husband, have put them through. Are you happy you did that to someone's child? Would you be happy if they do that to your daughter? Are you saying that your daughter should be accepting of her husband being, bringing more women into the family? Again, I know that in some religion and society, it's the norm. And for these women, they are not as traumatized as women that it is not the norm for them from, from where they are coming from. Their background is completely different. Because the women that in their culture, this is the norm, they have been groomed right from childhood, that this can happen. And they are very acceptive of it. But the heart of man is very wicked. I can only know my heart. And when the day I give my vow, I, I say I would not break my vow, but I know about me. I do not know about the other person because we have the tendency of changing. The other person would fall into temptation. The other person, you know, might be giving that vow, but deep down they know that they can never keep to that vow. But how do I know the other person's heart? May we never be married to our enemy. So a man will tell you, yes, but that was 20 years ago. I uh, Things change, things happen, and they expect you to remain in such a very toxic environment and say, who else is going to marry you after four kids? Who is going to marry you at your old age? Like, how selfish. How selfish, how cruel, how arrogant. Have you seen the film, Chief Daddy? Imagine the whole chaos going on in that family, even when he was alive and when he died. This is what happens. For generations, it's very impossible. I've, I've happened to come across someone that he used to be a very wealthy person, but when he died, the place he was buried, you know, even till date, the, the, the children cannot even share his, his the property, the inheritance, they can't, because there's so much fight. And I've also, uh, I've also heard about stories where families start to kill themselves, poison themselves over inheritance. Is this the leg legacy you want to leave behind? All for what? All for what? Guys, do you think that we should be consenting of polygamy? Or do you think that polygamy should be something that should be scripted completely because of the impact it has on the kids, because of the impact it has on the on, on the on the woman who is very who is who is the one that is really really suffering? Imagine a sixty-year-old man being married to an 80 year, eighteen-year-old woman due to economic power. Some societies are accepting of polygamy because of social mobility and because economic power is solely laid on the man the woman has no choice than to be accepting of it how do we change this narrative woman 
empower yourself. Women educate yourself. Education has nothing to do with just four walls of the classroom whereby you go and you learn science and you learn math and you learn English. Education is also textile, it's also trade. It's also you going to learn a craft. Do something, e-commerce, commerce, you know, trade and commerce. This is part of education. Go learn how to farm. Go learn how to milk a cow and sell a cow. And have your own farmland, produce crops, sell. Empower yourself because it would give you better opportunity, better standing in the relationship. Imagine a young child is being sold into marriage because of six cows and, and ten goats. This is also part of the reasons why people get married. Before you go into marriage with a man, please give him this condition. For better, for worse, to death do us bad, you and I alone, one and only, I would not accept you to marry somebody else. Empower yourself. It will give you a voice in the relationship. It will give you more options when things are not going your way. You don't have to stay there and destroy your health, destroy yourself, destroy your kids. Some of these men, I don't know, like imagine this man gets married to this woman. He knows nothing about, about family planning. The woman knows nothing about family planning. Or they cannot afford family planning. And the man ends up impregnating the woman 10 times. She has 10 kids, 12 kids from each woman. And all of these kids are running up and down in the villages. They, they can't even go to school. Why? Because society accepted that polygamy should be a norm. In what case do we think that polygamy is reasonable for it to go on? And in which case do you think that polygamy should be very, very unacceptable? Why does this wealthy man, instead of empowering women, instead of helping the poor, he decides that he's some kind of messiah and he will say, give me your, give me your daughter to marry and I will help, help her, educate her, I will build a new house for you. Isn't that very selfish? There are some motives that should be questioned behind polygamy for some people, not not everyone. Some people have very justifi justifiable reasons why they go into polygamy, but not, not everyone. Should polygamy be completely scraped? Do you think that polygamy should be something that should be legalized everywhere? Do you think that women should be more accepting of polygamy? Because I know that this day and age that the rise of side chicks, baby mama, you know, people having multiple um, partners outside of their like the main relationship is quite um, common and it's not just men that have extramarital affairs women are also having extramarital affairs like women do cheat as well as much as men so <laughs> what do we do in situations like this like should we ask the woman to bring her husband or her boyfriend home and get married to her husband or should we ask the man to bring his wife or his side chicks home and get married and we all live as one big family? Would you be accepting of it? In what case do you think that this should be acceptable and in which case do you think it's unacceptable? What can you live with? Please keep your comment coming in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.